for a lot of things these days, if you want to know something, you can just Google it, but that doesn't really work with lobsters. Um, our knowledge only stretches so far, and when it comes to this, we're right at the cutting edge of, of um, marine science here at the lobster hatchery. And so um, when we need to investigate something, if no one's done it before, then we have to do it ourselves. The hatchery now is, is starting to gain quite a serious reputation as a research organisation and some of the work that we're developing now is, is creating an impact elsewhere in the globe. My name is Carly Daniels. Um, I've been at the hatchery for the past 10 years and at the present I'm doing work on research and development side of things, so leading all the research work that goes on here at the hatchery. We've kind of got two main areas where, where we want research to go forward. Um, the first is obviously improving culture techniques within the hatchery. We use different techniques, uh, different feeds uh, to try and improve kind of growth and survival during the early larval stages when they're with us here in the hatchery. But we're also doing some work um, based out at sea in um, containers out at sea. So we're, it's basically a transition step between the hatchery and releasing into the wild. The second side of the research that we do is kind of a bit broader uh, and it looks at kind of general stocks and ways to figure out how the stock enhancement work that we're carrying out is having an effect on natural populations and also how it's having an effect on the environment in general. My name is Charlie Ellis and I am currently a PhD researcher based here with the National Lobster Hatchery and doing my research in conjunction with the University of Exeter down at their Cornwall campus here in Penryn. At the moment I'm um, using uh, genetic methods to try and uh, help our understanding of lobster biology and uh, stock enhancement. So I've got several projects running at the moment. Um, one is using genetic markers, um, a type of marker called microsatellite DNA and that we can use to assess differences and similarities between individual lobsters. All of the studies that we're doing at the moment are kind of leading into that big question of can we use genetic markers as a way of tagging and identifying hatchery reared lobsters in the wild amongst wild equivalents and find out how far they're moving, how well they're surviving, how well they're integrating with wild populations so that we might be able to launch assessments to actually actually estimate what kind of impact the hatchery is having on the local fishery and the sustainability of lobster populations. I think with a lot of postgraduate research these days, while it's always a novel um, contribution to science, um, I think sometimes it can get a bit lost as to what the real world applications of that research can be. Whereas with my project, um, we've got a very obvious problem that we're trying to solve and um, a very obvious use for this work, hopefully in future. It's definitely um, required, and it's something that's uh, hopefully gonna really benefit the hatchery and the University of Exeter, as well as myself in the future. As our ambitions in research have developed, so we've had to develop partnerships uh, with experts, leading experts at different institutes, so we've had really good relationship with the University of Plymouth, University of Exeter, um, with CFAS, the Government Lab, with Plymouth Marine Labs. Having relationships with, with those external organisations enables us to, to engage in research at a much higher level than a small charity would otherwise be able to do. Uh, so it's a really critical thing to have those collaborations.